Shiver is a horror movie themed RPG published in 2021 after a successful Kickstarter. It was written and developed by Charlie and Barney Menzies and illustrated by Ben Alexander. Essentially it's meant to simulate virtually any genre of horror movie that you want with an emphasis on physical action and survival. The game uses six core stats called skills. These each have a special symbol that are used on special D6s and D8s made for the game. Before you roll your eyes at more special dice that you have to buy for a game, I have to note that the creators made a free online dice roller that not only rolls these special dice for you when you input your stats, it instantly interprets all the dice for you too. Anyway, your skills each have two numbers. The first represents your core skill rating and tells you how many special D6s you can roll on a check for that skill. The second number is your talent rating in that skill. These are few and far between, but if you have one or more talents in a skill, you roll a special eight-sided die for each point that you have for a test. Which is to say, this is a dice pool game and you're throwing handfuls of dice for each check. The aim on a check is to come up with a certain number of the symbol that matches the stat being challenged. That number is the challenge rating and the game master or director comes up with it for every test. The other symbol that counts as a success is a talent symbol that will show up on a talent die. The dice pool thing does get a bit more complicated though. There are a number of factors that affect the number of dice you will roll on a check. If you meet or beat the challenge rating, you do the thing you're trying to do, and if you fail, you don't. But if you fail and roll up any strange symbols, you tick up the doom clock. There's a timer that starts at the beginning of every session that gets ticked up whenever a strange symbol shows up on a failed roll or when certain actions are performed. Certain events of increasing severity happen every 15 ticks until finally the finale is forced on the players at the 60th tick. I am definitely a fan of clocks like this, both big and small, but it's worth mentioning that the one here is meant to add dread and tension to a session and not actually control the pace of the story at all. The director is responsible for coming up with each of the events that gets triggered, but it's up to the player's behavior how fast the clock actually ticks up. Each character starts with 16 points of health, and for every four points that they lose, they pick up a different, worse health status. The status affects the character in one mechanical way or another. As far as dying, the game offers two modes, the survivor mode, where recovering from death is pretty likely, and nightmare mode, where losing the 16th point of health means death, period. One thing I loved were the suggestions of how a PC who dies can still be in play. You can always spin up a new character, but if you want to keep your character and everyone at the table is cool with it, your character can come back as a ghost or undead or even resurrected with dark magic or alien technology. There are no hard mechanics to support these options, which actually makes them even better. The game offers turn-based or free-for-all combat modes, but it all still comes down to this. Each weapon has a core skill associated with it. The more skill and talent points you have in that skill, the more dice you get to throw when using the weapon. Enemies in turn have a challenge rating. When you attack an enemy, you need to meet or beat that number with your roll. There are some other nitty gritty rules on combat, but honestly, it's not that many compared to other traditional dice rolling games of this ilk. The archetypes to choose from for your character pretty much cover every horror movie character type you can think of. If you're a real horror buff, you might be able to think of some outside of this list, but each of these archetypes goes really deep into specialization through abilities, and there's a lot to work with. If there's an archetype that you want that's not listed, you can also mix and match abilities, but with the cost of a penalty, weirdly enough. Characters can progress to level 15, but honestly the game seems to be more built around one-shot play where a session acts as a movie experience. Levels act more as starting points for players who want to play the game again, but at a higher tier of power. With higher levels, characters have access to more abilities on their archetype's ability tree. Each of the archetypes has their own 8 tiers of unique abilities. Two of the 10 tiers are universal stat upgrades, but within the eight actual levels of abilities for each type, there is a staggering amount of flavor and mechanical variety. I can't state it enough, where Shiver shines is its ability trees. If as a director you want to get your feet wet with the game, you would start your players off at level one or two, where they only have enough point buy to access a few abilities. But with enough play, when you want your session to get crazier and more gonzo, just start them out at higher levels where they can grab wild and super powerful abilities right out of the gate. Just make sure your monsters are up to snuff. One of the steps of creating your character is choosing a background. 
They are divided by archetype, but the book says you can pick any background for any type. These confer an ability and a flaw that both have a mechanical bite to them. I have to note here that there are three background options per archetype with two little mechanical rules per background. So on top of the hundreds of abilities on offer, these backgrounds keep on another hundred or so fun little bits to choose from. So despite the underlying game being a pretty simple and straightforward dice pool system, each individual character is a vessel for dynamic play and you can end up with a different experience each time you play. If you're a fan of special little rules that apply only to your character, then this game delivers. The most thematically on point aspect of your character is the fear that you choose for them. You name a fear of theirs, anything you can think of, and whenever they encounter it in the game, you make a fear check that will have its own challenge rating depending on the situation. This will always be a strange skill roll, so you would roll with your strange rating. On a success, the character musters courage, but on a failure, they pick up one of three fear points on a track. At each stage of fear, their abilities degrade. Characters can reduce their fear track in a few ways, and it can be pretty important to do this since the penalties for fear get pretty steep. There's a good 30 pages of advice and another 70 or so pages of tools for the director on how to set up and run a session. This accounts for about half of the book, and it's all pretty well presented. Since the game is the genre agnostic horror movie simulator, a lot of time has to be spent in the book discussing horror concepts. There is a lot that's unpacked here, including an outline of three acts, which is how most movies are structured. The list of weapons provided in this section sort of stretches itself thin, trying to cover as many horror genres as possible, but it does lay the groundwork for any kind of custom weapon you think you'll want in the game. The weapons range from basic melee to ancient and modern projectiles, as well as futuristic guns and occult devices. The same is for armor, which in-game can reduce incoming damage in an encounter. The list is pretty genre-busting, but doesn't cover all possibilities across all genres, so you might have to homebrew some armor items if you're going deep. And the same goes for the list of special items. But if you'll notice, almost all of these items, from weapons to armor to special items, come with their own mechanical rules. It's pretty incredible from a game design standpoint and speaks to the replayability of this game. Enemies in Shiver are presented with a bit of complexity. First, you have four general categories of reaction types. These determine how the enemy will react to getting hit. Every time an enemy is hit, the director rolls a single d6 skill die to see which reaction they will use, which is to say, enemy behavior in combat can be pretty interesting. If you have the inspiration and the time, you can design your own reaction table for a creature. One example for a custom table is provided in the book for Dracula. As far as the actual bestiary goes, as you might have guessed, it runs the gamut across all the horror genres. Each enemy listed here is unique, with their own attacks and abilities that really do feel different from one another. On top of the enemies themselves, there are several types of infections that the director can levy on players to ramp up the dread and tension of a session. The progression of an infection can be tied to the game's doom clock or to individual characters' health track. A cure can also be dangled in front of players to drive the narrative along in one direction or another. There's a sample one-shot at the end of the book called Corporate Risers, where players find themselves as employees trapped in the bottom floor of a heartless corporation whose experiments upstairs have gone horribly wrong. I think this scenario does highlight one big hurdle for directors who want to play a game of Shiver, and that's the amount of prep and planning involved. This scenario runs for 20 pages in the book, which means the director would have to read and reread these pages before running it. That being said, if you want to see this particular scenario run by one of the creators themselves, there's a great actual play on the Plus One EXP channel, which is hosted by Tony Vicenda. Since that session was run by one of the authors, you get to see all the bits and pieces of the game run extremely smoothly. All right, here are my thoughts on Shiver. Cons. Big burden on the director. This game more or less aims to simulate a horror movie experience heavy on the survival elements, but it is up to the director to maintain the proper pace and build up the horror and tension throughout the session. That means there's potentially a lot of prep involved and a lot of memorizing enemy stat blocks if you want to keep combat flowing nice and fast. Mini Mechanics Fest. I consider this a con and a pro actually. The number of little rule changes and exceptions that come in the form of player abilities, enemy abilities, backgrounds, and items is simply insane. 
These can really slow down gameplay if the director and players don't spend any time reading and thinking about them beforehand and end up reading them for the first time at the table trying to parse them all out during gameplay. Pros, mini mechanics fest. If your group enjoys dynamic gameplay and they can absorb new rules on the fly, then this game is a pure gem. The hundreds of different abilities and item effects make for infinite replay possibilities. Art and presentation. I personally found the layout and the artwork in this book to be really clean and pretty much flawless. The artwork is done in a way that just works for all the genres that the game is trying to embrace, and the layout breaks up the text in a way that makes everything super easy to read and absorb. The online roller. I think there are two main arguments against specialty dice for a game, the unneeded complexity and the additional cost. But Shivers Online Dice Roller goes ahead and nullifies both of these arguments by summarizing all the results for you and being absolutely free. I can't say I'm always in the mood for horror. It comes and goes with the seasons, but I like the idea of a well-honed, one-size-fits-all RPG for when I need to scratch that itch. A lot of horror RPGs specialize in one genre or another, and they end up kind of specializing in just one type of experience. But when you have a Swiss Army knife of horror games like Shiver, you can pretty much tailor the experience to anything you want, as long as it's a survival horror movie. As always, thanks for watching. This is Dave signing off. See ya.